Welcome to Iris After Hours. Casual conversations with inspirational speakers off the clock. Hello. Welcome to Iris After Hours. I am here with Nathan Kotzer. Come on. I'm Crystal and Human, and we are excited Very excited. To introduce our guest, Sandra Martin-Hicks. She is a gifted storyteller. She has been making films for over 30 years. Come on. She's a documentary maker, award-winning documentary filmmaker, passionate... actor originally. Come on, the actors. Oh, hey, what's up? That's exciting. And we're learning things. Yes. What? Very important things. So many things. These are very important things. And without further ado... We are here with Sandra. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here. (laughs) Sandra, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming out of your way, all the way from Texas. Texas. Come on now. All the way now. Yeah. I do apologize. I didn't bring my boots. I was afraid to create a shadow on your face, Nathan. (laughs) I mean, my hat, not my boots. I was going to say, how's it going to do that? (laughs) They are big boots, man. Big boots. I want to see those boots. Right here, baby. That's all I got. Boots wearing hats. (laughs) Um, this is super exciting. Thank you. You've, you, it's great to have someone who, you know, has been doing what you're doing for so long and you're obviously a woman of faith. Um, so let's go back. Let's, I I would love to start there. Have you always been a Christian? How, How did, how did you encounter God? Were you a teenager? What, what, what's your God story? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, I accepted Christ in Bible school when I was young, but that was about all there was to it. And then when I was... The Bible school, like as a young adult? Bible school, vacation Bible school. Oh, oh VBS. Like, yeah, VBS. VBS, right, right. come on. And now this is real spiritual. My family <laughs> quit going to church, and when I was in eighth grade, my boyfriend went to church a lot because his dad was a deacon. So I joined the youth group so I could see my boyfriend. Hey. Uh, oh, yeah. God What's uses up? everything. Love in all the right places, baby. Come and, on. And um, I got involved in the youth group, and we went on a, a youth trip. And before that, they had a, um, what they called a lay witness revival is what they call them back in the Baptist churches, back in the dark ages. Oh, the Baptist churches. So it's just normal people sharing their God story. Something like that. And so, um, lay people people means like people (coughs) in the the congregation, every day, run of the mill. I discovered that there was something called Jesus could be the Lord of your life, which I had never heard of that. Right. And it changed my life. And I think I decided it. Age thir- 14 or 15. Come on, I, the Baptists. I uh, <coughs> felt God calling me to be a full-time missionary. No way. What and age? So, like 14 <gasps> or 15. But That's amazing. I, you know, back in those days, you, a woman either became a missionary or you married a pastor. Right. And even at 14, I was wise enough to know with my attitude, no pastor could keep his job with me as a wife. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought, missionary I'm, it is. That's, that's right. That's right. I'm going to marry Jesus on that mission field. Come and on. so anyway, uh, long skinny as I go off to school, I backslide, get hurt <coughs> in church, and you know, all that kind of silly stuff. And um, Yep, it happens. I, I came out to Hollywood in 1979 or 80 or something like so that. So how old were you when you came out to Hollywood? 19. I was going to be the next wow. Carol Burnett and let her get off her throne and take over, you know. So Hollywood was still the big deal when you were 19? This is like, as oh, it is yeah. today, oh, Hollywood's yeah. still the oh, same? Yeah. No, yeah. Hollywood's not really the same. Like, I mean, it doesn't. With all the new stuff and technology, you can make films in Lincoln, Nebraska, in your basement. I mean, yes. You know, but anyway, so um, so it, so Hollywood was more, more important than you when you were nineteen than it oh, is now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, to get yeah, here yeah. was oh, the place. The only way you could yeah. make films is if you were one of the select few. Yeah. But anyway, I got married, had kids, blah blah blah. Got into you got here. No, I went back to Texas to. I met my husband right after I went off to college, and I still came out to California. So Even the, though I was hot and heavy in love, I left him there and went, no, no, I got to go. And Wow, career my heart, woman. The my career heart woman. kept pulling me back, pulling me back. So is I guess it was right Is that when thing. you studied acting out here in Pasadena at the yeah. arts college? Yeah, American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Come yeah. on. Wow. But what anyway. techniques did you study? Just I'm curious. Did you do... Like Stella Adler's work or like Stanislavski? Uh, uh, no, it Meisner? was Gellinger, a guy named Gellinger. Gell- okay, yep. You know. So um, anyway, I wound up getting, I went back, finished school, got married, and I guess it's the right thing to do. It's been in 35 Houston? years. Well, I got wow. married and I went to school in OU, moved to Houston because I married an old man, yeah. and was despondent, depressed, and lost because I was in Texas with no job, no career, no friends. How many babies? None. I was married for a long time before I had kids. Okay. But I um, I kind of stumbled into somebody that did corporate films and talked them into hiring me. And I did kinda, you knew f- did you know filmmaking was what you were passionate oh, about? Oh, I got a degree. The whole time? Well, I did, had a, got a degree in filmmaking. After this, I went back to school. Oh. 
and uh, got a degree. In, it was just kind of a fluke how it came to be. I didn't know what to do, but I got a degree in filmmaking. So I actually, you know, had I learned with 16 millimeter film. Video was just coming wow. into the, as I was leaving school. So I never had any classes oh, in video. Oh, my goodness. I had to self taught. So anyway, literally I, cutting film to edit. <laughs> yeah, that's literally the way we did. You splice the tape, the scotch tape, and blah blah blah. It's amazing. Wow. So I, uh, I um, you, you, went to work for him, and then at the ripe age of twenty-five, because I didn't know what else to do, I started my own production company. Come on. And I was, you know, even though I was backslidden, God obviously had His hand on me because He brought a man who hired me to do uh, a job for him, and he turned out to be like a father to me. Wow. And um, I didn't know he was such a giant in business, and he turned out to be in the Human Resources Hall of Fame. And um, wow. he, this film I did for him, it won like all kind of international awards for, not because of what I did, but because of the geniusness of what he had done. It's still been the only one like it ever in the world created, this whole program, the way it worked. And he would, people would come from all over, Fortune 500 companies would come to his place in Princeton, New Jersey to uh, to go through this program. And he would, I would went, I went to New York every six weeks and I was, he had a castle that he built and I would stay in the castle. Oh. His house was a that's castle. A fun part. And he would say at just the right time, he would have me come in and he would tell everybody I was in the area doing production and he talked me into coming over so everybody could meet the producer of this program called MAP. And I mean... I was just sitting there getting work, just wow. like uh, from like Estee. I mean, just big name companies. I don't want to say, but a lot of big name companies because Scott would say, "If you need production, she's the one to do it." And oh, he was so nice. highly revered and respected. He's built my business. I, I love that man. Guy, I love that man. And um, so we were great. He tried to get me to go into business with him and all, but my husband, we couldn't live in New Jersey because he was an old man. So anyway. I did that for, <clears throat> that was September 1984 when I started. And then wow. in 1997, um, I did my first faith-based project called Pray USA. It was an initiative for countries around the world. They called for prayer for America for 40 days so of hang on. fasting. Just one second. So where did the journey go from you being backslidden into the company to you doing a faith-based project in 97? What happened how did Tying you come those back? Two worlds okay. together. In 1993, um, a friend said, I have a friend that I told about you. She needs to do some little educational video or whatever. And I told him to call you. And I thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> so this woman calls me up and wants me to talk to her about making a video for her. She did a program called Whole, Whole Language versus Phonics. She had this little high squeaky voice, and I was so arrogant. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. I would have said no, but a friend, you know, when a friend sends you, you have yes. to be right. do the courteous thing for your friend. And Absolutely. I, and my arrogant Doing mind. Doing a favor. And my, I'm not kidding you. In my little arrogant mind, I said, you're going to go down there. You're going to have lunch with her. You're going to get in. You're going to get out. You're going to give her a few tidbits of advice. She's going to be thankful she met you, and you're going to get out. And I went in there at 1130, and when they were changing the tables over and people were coming in to sit for dinner at 530, we were embarrassed and left. Wow. Whoa. The woman had so much God on her wow. without even talking about God. She had so much God on her that I fell apart. I went home. Because, you know, I had a good marriage. I had a new baby. She was about two. but And I was making lots of money and all that. But I had a hole in my heart as big as Texas. Because once you've known the Lord and you walk away, there is no peace. Wow. And yeah. it just was this hole. And I went home and I got down on my knees. And I changed my life. And I haven't gone back since. And so she became a mentor, a great friend. And um, the thing is, is she kept saying wow. to the Lord, Lord, I don't have any money to pay her. I got to cancel this meeting. And every time she'd pick up the phone to call me, the Lord would say, put the phone down, put the phone down. And she thought, I'm wasting her time. I'm going to get her down there and I have no money. And in the course of this meeting with her, I was so taken with her. I said, you know what? I got an idea. Instead of you paying us, how about if we just do this for you? And then you just pay us a royalty as you sell it. Wow. You just felt to say that. Yes. Wow. I just said it. That's so, so awesome. God. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Exactly. So and she, such a good reminder to stay humble. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I was. And be open. And yeah, it's just incredible. Yeah. So um, that was the beginning of God putting amazing, amazing people in my life and changed my life. And 
She said to me right after that, she goes, there is still such a call in your life. It's like neon flashing the lights. Mm. You, you got to get back to it. And so one day I was walking across my den. I was going to teach uh, in a Christian school. They asked me to teach senior class in production. So I was going to do it just for fun. And I remember walking across my den to get a book and I froze. It was like an advice. I couldn't move. And I heard the Lord say, I want you to reclaim the airwaves. And oh. what? I didn't know what that meant. And then over the next 15 years, as I traveled all over the place, I would meet other filmmakers from all over, and God was telling them almost the same thing. So what I began mm. to see is that God was building a media army in the earth. And then when Mel Gibson did The Passion of the Christ, oh, yes. I don't yeah. know about y'all, but I feel like that's when the barn doors were kicked down. Wow. And that's when things really started changing. Yeah. Yeah. And, Actually, yeah, you know, I've never thought about that. So that's true. That's why we said he, he kicked the barn doors down. Wow. And so, you know. Wow. And from then, your faith became an important part of your filmmaking, right? Well, you kind of ended up so down then in the 98, road. seven, I did this thing on Pray USA, and I was <clears throat> so excited to be able to do something for God that I remember when I edited that thing, I spent the whole time editing. I sat at my edit table, I moved my chair, and I stayed on my knees, and I edited on my knees almost the whole time because I was so afraid oh, wow. I wouldn't do the right thing or I wouldn't do what God wanted. I was so new in all this and I was new in the charismatic. I was just just really wanting to do the right thing. And they told me that they God put his anointing on it and people would see it and they said the churches would just break out in all night prayer and without saying a word. And anyway, wow. that was that's when I went to see that, because if I were to just look at it now, I'd probably go, what was the big deal with that? Mm -hmm. But what I learned then is it really doesn't matter what it is. If God puts his anointing on it, that's all it takes. Come on. You wow. Know? That's, yeah. And so that's I kind of got, of wisdom right there. I got hooked on it and then it just kind of started going more and more that way. And then I started doing documentary features uh, and things and you know, short stories. And I just, I love true stories. I love, love, love true stories. And so I've kind of lost my taste for the business stuff anymore. I'm very grateful because I had it for a long time and I learned my craft while getting paid and doing a service for businesses. But it's good now to feed the kids and that's it. pay the mortgage. And now I Thank can you, just, Jesus. um, now I just do the things. Now I feel like I'm in a place where God has said, don't do projects just for money. And I want to go, but <laughs> Have you seen the bank account, Lorna? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. But you know, it's it's a faith walk, and so <clears throat> now I just turned down a big. Somebody asked me to do a big project on a an important topic, but I thought, you know, it'll take me away from what I'm doing for probably six months, and it'll be very difficult and emotionally draining because a lot of the stories God's had me do has been very difficult. Like I did my last feature film was on yeah. Faith Under Fire on the first time a mass gunman burst into a church in the United States and committed mass murder. Yeah, 30 years ago. Yeah, one of the first people killed was a seven-year-old girl. Mm. You know, like, you're more likely to get killed in church than in school, even with all the school killings because of, you know, there's a lot of family drama and violence and stuff being played out in churches now. But anyway, that was a hard story, and I've done on child abuse. I just get a lot of these hard stories. So anyway. Oh, just side issue. Fox said the other day on news that Christians are the most persecuted religion in the world. It's official for this year. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's what Donald Trump says, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. He's got, he's got so, his sources correct. <laughs> um, anyway, what brings us to, and what brings me here connected to Iris, is that uh, a number of years ago, God gave me the idea of something to create that I'm working on, and I, I um, felt that the Lord began to tell me um, that he was going to have me do Heidi Baker, a story with Heidi Baker. Come on. Uh, to be the first one, and I thought, hmm. And I actually met the first one of a of, series of this series of this yes. new thing I'm doing. But uh, <clears throat> I actually met Heidi in 2010, and I think this is kind of the way prophetic antennas worked. I was speaking. I had distributed the film Furious Love a number of years ago, and and we distributed it all over the world. And I was there speaking about it, and and Heidi, when I came off the stage, Heidi says, "I need to talk to you." She wanted to introduced me to somebody via phone that was working on a project about her. And I think what that is about is I think our prophetic antennas were kind of tuning in that there was assignment for us together, but it wasn't for then. Right. Okay, so yeah. I, I met her in Harrisburg in October, and I told her about the story I wanted to do. And, and um, Heidi and I have a lot of personality traits in common, so I knew that before my conversation was over with her, 
I would have a yes or no because she's like me. She makes fast emotional <laughs> decisions. This is very true. Yes. <laughs> and you either feel God on it in like five seconds or forget about it. Mm-hmm. And and I knew it. I knew how to talk to your mother because we're just alike in yeah. that way. So, <laughs> Mom. so anyway, uh, we did. And um, so uh, I showed up in um, Mozambique. She said yes. And a month later, I was in Mozambique with the crew. Uh, there was five of us. And um, that was last year or this year? Just a couple months ago. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I kind of got sidetracked in what I was going to tell you about. <laughs> what was, what are we talking about? We were back talking <clears throat> about your journey within faith and meeting Heidi back in 2000, the yeah. first time you met her. And that was yeah. pre- it didn't work out. Then it was a prefiguring for, for now. Yeah. Well, God. Once I believe with all my heart, and you probably too, too. You know all these big revivals and stuff that people have prophesied about, like Bob Jones, the billion young, you know, okay? Yes, billion okay. Yeah. Yeah. It has to come through media. Come on. I mean, it has to, mm-hmm. because we can only go so many places and talk to so many people. And so How else I, can you I know reach that many people. I know it's going to come through media. Whoa. I know it is. And it's going to come through the internet. It can't, like, you know, if you get something here on cable, well, that's only going to stay in the United States. But think about it. Mm-hmm. We can post something on the Internet and people all over the world can see it in one day. Yeah. And so um, I'm taking the story with Heidi. It's a seven-part TV show, 48-minute episodes, seven of them, and it's called Walk With Me. And it's a story about how God pursues his children because he loves us so much. And it's wow. about it's about how when we say yes to him, it's about the incredible life we can live when we really just turn it over and let him lead and and go with that. And so he comes in, he like takes, you know, we get consumed with him and then we can go out and here's fruit. Now, now you know him and now you go out, Nathan, and then you reach her and then she goes, and that's really how the church was built, Yeah, absolutely. you know? And so that's what it is. And so the way we're doing it, it's not just, it's not a typical, let's, in fact, I have not interviewed Heidi at all. I don't ever interview her. We get her on the fly doing things, but it's never about sit down interviews. It's just about, it's about her everyday relationship one-on-one with God. I mean, some of my favorite footage, we were going on an outreach um, way up in wherever. Your dad flew us on a plane up to wherever. And I asked your mother <laughs> yes. where we're going, and she goes, does it matter? Do you really know if I tell you? And she goes, absolutely not. I just want to see if you knew where we were going. So, anyway. Right. Are we just going to land somewhere? Yeah, I don't know. Masimba de Pariah? I don't know if I'm going to do that. Yeah. Where Ros is? The no, Rosie's? I don't know. We flew up. It's like an hour and a half flight somewhere. Oh, all right. Yes, so right. anyway, when we get there, the the powers that be, the, the tribal leaders or whatever, they kept saying, no, you can't come. No. So we got turned down four times. So... Instead of being able to, to go and do what we were wow. going to do, we had to make a plan. So we were on this van, and we had to go into Maputo or somewhere for your mother to go into the grocery store to buy food for everybody because the plans had changed. So we followed her Honey. with the camera in the grocery store. It looks It's just so fun. It's so nice. reality show. We're in there, and and um, a guy comes in and says, we got another phone call, and we got canceled again. She gets so She goes, can we just not film right now? <laughs> Right. I'm a little stressed out. Yeah, she was. Yeah. I showed it to her later and she died laughing. Oh, man. I go, yeah, you were a little upset. But I said, it's good TV, man. Good TV. <laughs> exactly. So so if you love Heidi Baker, what you're going to see in the show mm. are things you don't ever see. It's the day to day behind the scenes. It's what does she do in disappointments and how to, what does she struggle in? It's about praying. And then um, I just went to Israel with her uh, last week and wow. Sorry, that was my dummy. That wow, was, that was so long and extended. No, I don't mean that. I mean, <laughs> wow, that I get to go to Israel. All right, good. I thought that's what you meant. Yeah. I wasn't entirely sure because. And we ate. I thought if I ate, and my I, stomach won't make noises in the interview. But there is my there, stomach. What are you going to do? Go so uh, <laughs> we we were, you know, she invited you to Israel. She, Israel, she is she first did. trip to Israel. Or you, you yes, know. it was. She goes. I can't believe this is your first time. I said, I know, but my first trip is not on a tour. It's with. It's with my hero of the faith. Come on, that's like getting better than mine that. Too. We went for the best right, time and so I mean, well. get this. So I'm over there. We're over there like four days together, and um, it's just she and I for most of it. And and we go into this place that's like the upper room. She calls it the upper room, and supposedly it was. And it's just the two of us. 
down on that floor with their heads together, crying out to God. And I mean, you know, she comes over and she just got her, she takes her hand on me and she's just praying for God to crash in on me. And I just thought, how am I here right now? It's pretty wild. Yeah. Yes. 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 We just, it was just a time, I think, to get to know each other and, and trust each other and all. And I said, cause you know, that's important it, it you takes, be, when you're I, working with her in that intimate way of and I filming said to her, her, you need that connection. I said, I just, you know, I, I want you to know how much I appreciate the trust because this does take trust. Yes, you Absolutely. have to trust that it's God, but you have to trust me that I'm going to take care of you and do the right thing. And, oh, yeah. and, um, and I will. I told her, I said, I will never let this out and, until she sees it and likes it and blesses it. But what's there not to see? I mean, you know... Heidi Baker's the real deal. I mean, yeah. she's a human, and of course she has flaws like all of us and other, but she loves, I mean, like, there were people making us crazy. Like, you know, I'm trying to film her and work, and there's all these people wanting to stop and do this, and, and she really does. This one guy who stopped and was just wanting to call her and talk to her, he didn't know who she was, and she mm-hmm. just looked and she goes, do you have a drug problem? And I thought, oh, that's what it is. See, I'm so clueless. I don't see all that. And she she takes the time to connect him and talk with him. And it didn't matter who it was. She just wouldn't hurt any. I go, can't we just tell them we can't do no? Because that will hurt somebody's feelings. I mean, she just won't hurt anybody's feelings. And, you know, I can see why God would, would choose to use her to share what it's like to walk with him. Wow. You know, that was... I said to her, I know you talk to God a lot when you're swimming. Can mm-hmm. we take a drone and film you swimming out there talking to God? And she goes, okay. <laughs> she just jumps in the water and yeah. and goes out there. And um, I was with her when I brought her a guy and I said, this guy's deaf. And she got all excited and she prayed and it took about 30 seconds he could hear, and he had never spoken a word. Oh my he couldn't gosh. hear, never spoken. And his friend, his best friend, was did not really know what to do. He went, wow. "I've known. We've been friends since we were a little bitty. I've never heard a word come out of his mouth." So he could hear, and Heidi started teaching him words mm-hmm. right there, you know, as we filmed. And then there was another guy I brought, and I said, "This guy can't hear either." Then we were out on the street <laughs> one day, and I said, "She was." talking with the guy and we were taking a widow home and buying her groceries. I said, Heidi, Heidi, that kid over there has a blind eye. She goes, where, where? So she went over and she prayed for him and he could see. Oh my goodness. Wow. 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 Did this experience filming her and being in Mozambique, did that, how did that compare with your other projects that you've worked on? Did it, has it felt like something new, something different or does it, well, I came home, and I had two dozen women over to my house for lunch. And they're all, we want to see footage. Because we they had all prayed for me while I was gone. Smart. And I, I smart. showed them. I put together it's some of the, the drone footage of Heidi swimming with some music and just some footage. I threw it together. And they thought it had been 30. I showed them 35 minutes worth. And they went, that was only seven or eight minutes. We want more. And I went, no, it was 35 minutes. Wow. No way. So anyway, I went into the kitchen to finish cooking. And when I came back out, some of them were shaking. They were crying so hard. That every single woman in there was mm. crying and weeping. And I looked at them and I said, wow. And they said, the presence of God on that foot is on that footage like you can't believe. And I have to say, in 35 years of filmmaking, I have never been so aware of God's anointing, God's hands, God touch on raw footage. Whoa. Like, it doesn't matter who I show the raw footage to. Mm. And I showed raw footage of, like, dirty water and clean water wells. And in about three weeks, without trying, without asking anybody, um, over $60,000 was donated to Iris to buy water wells and to give water to widows just from looking at the footage. How amazing is that? That's Isn't it? Incredible. That's the power that's the power of media. Yeah. You know, media is the most powerful communication tool we have and it's um you know, when when I was with your mother and in her house and she allowed us into her prayer room to shoot some stuff and um anytime I shoot a story or do a tell somebody's story, a true story, I feel I just feel like I'm walking on holy ground. I mean, mm-hmm. cuz this is like 
this is your mother's life that I'm exposing, and it's her life that I put. It's her on the line, not me. Yeah. Nobody knows who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, except my friends. They all know me. I'm really famous among my friends. (laughs) You know they all know who I am. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, I don't know. It's just, this is such an honor. Gosh, this is such an honor Mm. to do this story. I I can't I tell everybody I can't wait to see how it turns out. Wow. <laughs> yeah, me too. Cuz you know usually whenever you do like a reality show or any kind of project, you go, you do research, you scope it out, you feel it, you say now on Tuesday we're going to shoot here and we're going to need this kind of equipment over here and over here on Wednesday and all I knew is that your mother said, "Yes, I'm in." I assembled a crew, raised the money, assembled a crew and flew over there and I'm telling you I was trying really hard not to be a nervous rat because I didn't know if your mother what I wanted to do was different had never been done before and I didn't know if she was going to like it I didn't know how much access I would have I didn't know what her life looked like every day does she sit at home working on the computer is she out in the dump what is she doing is she in church what is, I didn't know and I couldn't get answers to anything Wow. so when I got <laughs> over there I texted her and I said I'm here and she says well come to my house after church Okay, and I saw some people, and they go, "Are you upset?" And I go, "No, I'm not upset. I'm scared to death. I'm a nervous wreck. I don't know if she's gonna like this or not. And what am I gonna do if she thinks my idea is crazy? I've got all these people over here. I've raised this money. What are we gonna do? I mean, you know, shoot beach videos for a week. What are we gonna do? So, yeah. Anyway, um, so if I got time with your mother, and we went out and sat in the yard, and my my friend that was with me on on the crew, she was praying, and she looked over at the body language, and I guess. Heidi had a certain body language. I had a certain body language, and we both looked like we were not seeing eye to eye on my friends. Oh. So we were having a great time. <laughs> I said, well, that that just ruins that whole thing for body language out exactly. the window. I know. I feel like Alan I've Pace. seen. Is it Alan Alan Pace talks about book? this. So I what? tell it to all the Heidi, and she goes, I like it. It sounds very powerful. And I went, you like it? We can do it. I said, well, how much time can I have? Because by this time, I'm thinking, man, we might get like two hours I was going to say, this probably wasn't a very... Very perfectly scheduled trip, I imagine. No. (laughs) No. And so when I I said, how much time a day can I have? I went, I waited for her to say maybe like two hours. And you know what that sweetheart said? She said, just climb into my life and go with me. Wow. Yeah. Come on. (laughs) Sounds about right. It's kind of what you have to do. And she said, let me tell you something, Sandra. I have people call me literally at least one a week asking me to come film. Yeah, true. And I tell them no. I get a lot of those emails too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She says no. I say no. And I said, well, how come I'm here? And she said, because I felt God. I felt it come was God. Mm-hmm. And um, so she did. She was very kind. They were all very kind. And she, we had access to almost everything. I mean, we could film just about everything we wanted and we were at her house multiple times, and and they flew us on that private plane to the to the outreach and great little I mean, there's, plane, isn't it? There's this one little shot I didn't even remember. We were out when she prayed over those that boy that was deaf, those two boys that were deaf, and she's standing over there back. She was so excited. She never gets tired of it. it doesn't matter if she's seen eighty thousand people healed. She's just as excited on every single one of them. She's just as excited and. And he, she was teaching him, and I'm just standing there next to her, just crying like a baby. And there's this, I put together this little photo book for her that I gave her, you know, in Israel. And there's this one picture where she's praying over the boy, and I'm standing in the background going, oh, I was like awesome. cheering her on, like, go, God, go. Come and on. Um, and uh, I don't know, she looked over at me in this shot. I was just bawling, and she just comes over, and she just puts her head on my shoulder and just smiles and just, I don't know, just. Wow. I don't know. I feel, I feel so honored that um, God would let me do this story. Wow. Um, I mean, I just really, I don't want to get all choked up, but I just really do, because you just want to say, you know, Lord, you know that song at Christmas, if you've been naughty or nice? <laughs> I guess I yes. guess he's not like looking at that list. <laughs> I guess God's not looking at that list, going, "I'm sure I've been naughty." You must be on the good list. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, just, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. This is fantastic. It, I can't. Uh, it's called Walk with Me. When will we see it? Do you think? Man, as soon as it's done. Come on. 
<laughs> That's a great answer. It's yeah. called, but it's called Walk With Me, mm. but me is God, because yeah. this story is told from God's point of view. Like I said, we have drone footage, and whenever you see drones of, of Heidi, it's God talking, and you hear conversations between God and Heidi, but it's, it's scripture. I'm not, I'm not making up words for God. It's scripture. And um, gosh, it's it's just very powerful. I and that's the direction this, you felt to go um, from the Lord. Yeah, when talk about that moment when you, you well, I did. watched I watched Compelled, Compelled by, by Love. Love. Yeah, and you I thought, did. why would I go film I did. Her more after <laughs> I had a, after I was set to go? I watched Compelled by Love one more time, and I went to bed that night, and I said, God, you know, I love Heidi. I'm very excited about going, but really, why am I going? There is so much media on this woman. Why would I need to go? The story's already been told. What? Why am I going? And I got up the next morning, and I was I was having coffee, and the Lord said, you remember a year ago I told you, whenever you tell stories, think of me as your client. I want you to tell this from my point of view, because Whoa, I want the world so cool. to know that I love, I'm their father, and I love them with a father's heart. And I said, okay, oh, cool. wait, I got to tell you this. The day he told me this, this was in July of like 2015, he said, he told me that, and then he said, I need the people to know how much I love them. And I said, well, Lord, you know, this isn't a real stretch for my theology. I could have had this conversation with my head. Could you just give me like a scripture or something to back up that what you just said was really you? Mm-hmm. And this verse came to my head, Jeremiah, I don't remember what it is now, 31, 3, 32, what, something. 33, 3. No, yeah. no, it wasn't a scripture I knew, <laughs> which at my age, there's not a lot of those I can remember, but I, I, it was, oh, I remember it was like right in front of me, like, I didn't hear it, it was like I saw it right in front of me, this big, fat, bold font, like you would never use it in marketing because it was an ugly font, <laughs> and, nice, and I remember thinking, yeah. oh, I would never use that font in marketing, but anyway, retro. what I heard it. And so I had the message right in front of me, and I opened it up, and this is what the scripture said. I've never stopped loving you. Expect love, love, and more love. I said, well, all right. So then, wow. two weeks later, I was in Colorado, and it was my birthday. And so my husband rented a convertible, Camaro convertible, because that's what I drove when he met me. Oh. And we had the lid off, and we were driving down the highway with the oldies playing, thinking we were hot stuff. You know, the Michael Jackson, the Bee Gees, and all that. And, Come on. I, yep. inter- I introduced my son, five-year-old son, to the Bee Gees the other well, day. Well, there you go. The How life. deep is your love, baby? So anyway, the next morning, <laughs> it was my birthday, and I heard the Lord said, I'm going to give you a birthday present. I'm going to give you a sign that everything I've told you about this media is going to come to pass. And I said, oh, no, Lord, I don't, I don't need a sign. I, I just need to walk by faith. And he goes, no, no, I want to give you a sign. Hmm. And I said, well, okay, Lord, if you want to, would you just know I'm not asking for it. And I heard, he goes, here's your sign. And I heard this song playing in my head, and it was an instrumental. And I thought, really? Well, okay, Lord, I'll be listening. So the next day, got the convertible down, got the tunes up, halfway to where we were going, two hours into this drive. That song came on the radio, and I just blurted out, bawling, and I grabbed my cell phone, I stuck it in the dash, and I'm recording it, and my husband thinks I'm fruity, but I'm recording the song, and now when you see it, it's sideways, the truck's coming at us, but you can hear the song, and you know what the name of the song was? Love's Theme, and you know what the name of the artist is? Love Unlimited. Wow. Right? Only God. Only God. Yeah, it's pretty specific. So, (laughs) anyway... So I'm sitting out on the porch one morning having coffee after I saw Compelled by Love, and I said, what, what is it you want me to do? And all of a sudden, I just I just like to see the film just going zip, 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 zip in my head. And what it was is, you know, because I'm doing this for, we're showing it in the Middle East and in Israel, and there's all places around the world we're showing it where people don't know the Lord. This is, if you're a diehard, you're really committed you'll be inspired because you can never see Heidi Baker and not be inspired and want more. But if you don't know him, this is to create a hunger to know him. And so people always think about God's in heaven. They always think he's up. You know what I mean? So my thought was, this is a thought he gave me, take a drone. So we took a drone to Mozambique and we shot a lot of footage of Heidi from a drone, like swimming, talking to God, walking along the beach, up on the mountain, from the car, everywhere. We shot a drone footage of her. And whenever you see a drone shot, it's the Lord speaking, and he speaks scripture. Like, for instance, I sent I sent Heidi a clip of this. I said, look, this is kind of what I'm thinking, but you're going to have to use a lot of creativity because I'd like to use a deep African voice 
to be this voice of God. Yeah. And so in my test... James L. Jones. Yeah, and in our test of this, we had uh, my oaky girl voice. <laughs> So in my is, oaky girl voice. Imagine this pitch bended a little yes, bit. Yes. In the yeah. oaky girl voice, I put this shot of Heidi walking along the beach, and I put in something like, I know you, Heidi. I saw you in your mother's womb. I created you in the innermost parts. You know, I have I have plans for you. Whatever, you know, it was. And I sent it to your mother, and I thought, man, that's going to take creativity to get past this little oaky girl voice. <laughs> And I wasn't exactly performing it very well. And she sent back a text and she said, that made me cry. I love God more than life itself. I just want to be with him. And I just want him to be pleased. Wow. Mm. And I thought, wow, if my okay girl voice made her cry, then we must be on the right track. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You know? So awesome. It was. It's a really sp- special project. I'm just telling you, you've never... I've never seen anything like it. I was going to ask you that. Have you have you seen anything like this? No. No. <laughs> no. no. Uh, I've never seen you? anything. And you know, the Bible says, his word will not return void. Mm-hmm. So if we're putting scripture in there, and it it doesn't say Romans chapter 3, verses 2. It's just, he just speaks it like conversation. Wow. The word is still going out, so it won't return void, will it? You're right. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but did you find that there were many challenges you didn't anticipate about shooting there, and then? No, your mother's schedule is the most challenging. Right, <laughs> but because I was gonna say, but that it sort of changes, everybody changes by the minute, doesn't that, it? That poor yeah. woman. <laughs> I, that poor woman. I don't know how she does it. People oh. are pulling and demanding from her all the time, mm-hmm. and she's literally running like. From place to place. Sometimes she, she does. Has to actually... When she'd be going, she goes, no, no, oh. run, run. You have to keep running. Yeah. Run, run. Don't Shoot, run. run. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We've been yeah. there. Uh, um, you know, that's just supernatural that she can yeah, you know, oh, deal with that. Oh, yeah. Her stamina. Even when we were in, stamina? Even when we were in Israel, I would, like, try to block where people can see her walking by stores because people would know her. And, you yeah. know. Oh, that's, yeah. Poor thing. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. It's like traveling with a movie star. Mm. I know. Yeah. yeah. In some circles, for sure. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, did you feel like there were those challenges, but that because the Lord was on it, the time that you did get was, we came home with more than I expected. Exactly. Yeah. Which no, is just, we a, came home with more yeah. than I expected and just, you know, I didn't really go with any expectations. I got a prophetic word a long time ago that the Lord would send you places when you wouldn't know where. And he said to me, you know, I'm sending you. There was another place I went a few months ago. He said, I'm sending you and you don't know why you're going and you're going anyway. And that pleases me. So, I'm, you know what? If I feel him tell me to do something, I don't have to know why. Mm-hmm. It's like wow. it's like I told That's your mother. Awesome I said, story. I'm going to need to know basis with God. When I need to know, he tells me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I told her something. She goes, you are being a rascal with me. I said, no, I wasn't being a rascal with you. It's just, what, a, what is it? Babe? God tells me six months ago or yesterday. I mean, he tells me what I need to know. Yeah. When I need to know, he tells me. Great. That's that is awesome. awesome. Yeah. Are you busy with simultaneous t- other projects as well, or is this kind of your main focus right now? Um, I normally am, but uh, God made it very clear to me to get rid of everything wow. and just stay focused on this. And so yeah. I'm so excited. Usually when I get through shooting a project, I'll take it and I go back and I, I leave it in the can, so to speak, for three or four weeks. Mm-hmm. And then I go back and I see it fresh. And I'm so, so, so excited about this project that I was even looking at it on Christmas Day. I was having a hard time. I, I can't put it down. Wow, yeah. I can't put it down. Wonderful. I can't. I'm just, I just look at the footage and it's... It's beautiful. It's like I told yeah. your mother. I said, you know, you think of me when I text you, but let me tell you, I'm looking at you seven days a week. All day, every day. I feel like we've been like best friends since we were like four. I mean, because, you know, whenever yeah. you're doing a project like that, you just, you're like consumed. You just eat up with it. And that's, I eat it, I sleep it, I drink it, I think it. I'm, yeah. It's always on my mind. The other mm-hmm. night I went to bed and I'm thinking, okay, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this. Yeah. And just, <laughs> just looking at the footage takes me back to that place. And, you know, you, you look, I look at your mother's face. When she's with these people, I said to her when I was in Israel, I said, you know, you know, Heidi, I look at you every day. And when I see your face when you're in Africa, that's not like where you are anywhere else. I mean, she's still Heidi, Mm -hmm. but there is a light and a joy 
that is on her when she is with the people in Mozambique. That is her mm-hmm. life. That is her call. That is her heart. That is her passion. Her energy, and it, it just, it just, yeah. it's just glows. It just comes mm-hmm. out of her. She just, she just loves it so much. And she loves those people so much. And, you know, she took me back. She goes, I want to take you to go see Jose and Albertino. That was the, the former witch doctor. And, and, you know, this woman, she tells a story and probably many people have, you know, a woman had leprosy all over her hand and, and the man comes with these snakes to kill her. And when yeah, he comes up to her... We have a couple of video updates about that story oh, yeah, on YouTube awesome. if people want to rewatch it. Well, Heidi takes this woman's hand and you can see her, you know, her fingers are... She has these leprosy sores all over. And the witch doctor's standing there with those snakes. And Heidi has his girlfriend, wife's, whatever, mm-hmm. hand. And she's kissing her hand with all these leprosy sores wow. on it. And she's telling me about how she's talking to this man and I said okay so how long after he showed up with these snakes how long did you have to talk to him before he put the snakes down and came to Christ because I'm thinking I'm thinking if this was under two or three hours this woman's gonna impress me and she goes about five minutes I broke out crying Mm. (laughs) five minutes isn't that crazy whoa (laughs) it's the power of love yeah that's what I've learned from Heidi Baker wow. is the power, the power of love. Yeah. You know, unconditional love. It's a, it's a weapon like no other. It is a, mm. it, yeah. it is the most powerful force yeah. in the universe. You know, and when I'm in Israel with her, she, this, you know, this was her time. I said, Heidi, I know you wanted to come to Israel by yourself. This is your private time. Why am I here? And she said, well, I said, the Lord told me to come to Israel, and he said to bring you. And I said, well, I hope you argued with him. She said, well, I went back to him three times, and he said to bring you. So she, I mean, I kept saying, go do your own thing. No, no, she wouldn't let me. She she, she kept me right with her. She took it serious, and, oh, yeah. and the places would be praying. I'd want her to just be, you know, seeking the Lord, and I'd be videoing her and everything. And she'd go, you're going to have to put that camera down and get down here on the floor, too. you got to get in on this. I said, yeah, yes, Mom, I will. I put it down, and I'd get down on the floor. And as soon as she would film she said the same thing to me, me or sit down else. there, yeah. she's not, her attention's all about me and how God's going to touch me and all that. I mean, she just, she can't help but give herself away. She can't help it. It reminds me of Roland's words. You probably remember it from Compelled by Love when Roland said, she's the one woman I know that has never said no to God. No, she never says no to anybody, really, you know. Mm. I mean, not not that it needs anything. And, yeah. and, of course, Roland, when we got there the first Sunday, I didn't see Roland, and we turn around, and there he was. He just giggling, and he'd go, hey. Everybody was just, like, flowing. <laughs> wham! There they go, wham! The, Papa the, Roland. Yeah, the, guy that was, the girl that was with me, I turned around to say something to her, and she was going down. I went, Roland, I'm holding the camera. Don't get close to me. <laughs> yes. All right. Was your film crew pretty impacted by that trip as well? Um, I saw I saw them change right in front of me. Wow. Yeah. Do you, are you bringing yeah. back the same team with you when you go um, in the summer? I don't know. I don't know if I'll bring as many. I'm. Um, I don't know. I'd like to bring my daughter. My daughter does audio. I'd like to bring oh, my daughter on awesome. the next trip. Um, I have a son that I'd like to go to Harvest School. Um, yeah. So I don't know what I'll do. You know, on this trip, I prayed and I said, Lord, who do I bring? Mm-hmm. And he brought the names to me and I asked them and I asked them to think about it, pray about it. And they all said yes. And, you know. Awesome. It's so, an adventure unfolding. It's really awesome. It was because we didn't, it was crazy because we didn't know what we were doing when we went over. And you never take a crew of five people with all that gear and all that equipment. You never just show up. <laughs> Without knowing what you're doing. Yeah. Especially 89,000 trillion miles away in a third world country. And people would say, well, why are we going? And you go, <laughs> yes. I'm going to tell you when I get home. It's not an easy trip. <laughs> I don't know. but It's um, amazing. How can people keep up with this? If they... That is a great idea. Okay. <laughs> yes. Glad you asked. Our company is called Heartstone Pictures. Heartstonepictures.com slash walk with me. Mm-hmm. So we've got a page on our website on Heartstone Pictures. There's lots of stories on there you can see and lots of testimonials and shorts and films and all. But we're having a page just with this walk with me. And so as we go along, we're going back. I'd like to do... Um, if we can work it out, we'd like to do some live Facebook things from the actual shoot when we're shooting there again. I think we're probably going to yeah. go back in June. Would I would go sooner, but I don't think Heidi's going to be back. She's going to be doing a lot of traveling. So I imagine we'll go. And it's also not as hot. <laughs> that is a good yeah. time for people yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah. 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 So, um, 
Yeah, we're so we'll sli- go back. Slightly more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and so what, if people want to follow it, uh, if they will if they want to come to this page, they can come back often or give us their email and we'll let them know. Like, at this stage, once a month, I want to start posting some clips and some footage because everybody that sees it just is like, wow, and they want to see more. And yeah, it's really a blessing. Yeah, people are going to want to see it right and away. And then we'll, we'll start posting, you know, a couple minutes, a um, couple times a week. Then as we get closer, uh, more and more. But I'm, I'm thinking just one more trip to Mozambique. Mm-hmm. I'll probably get us get us done, and then and then we'll roll them out. Then we'll release them all at one time. You know, all seven. That's right. Episodes. It's a series. It's all going to be released at one time. But then there's also going to be a lot of like behind the scenes stuff and extra footage that you can see. There's things that you know won't make the cut. And yeah, I had a yeah. great conversation with your mom one night when we had gone to see uh, the former witch doctor. We were on our way back, and I sat. I got up in the front because I was going to tape an interview with her but by the time we got out of there it was dark and as you know there's not a lot of lights I know over that there. feeling <laughs> so we had a microphone on her and I think she forgot we had the microphone on her and we had the best girl talk um yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's so, awesome yeah there's probably gonna be a little stuff in that and I said so I said to her I said so Heidi you're just so fearless I mean how long were you a Christian became before you became so fearless like you know, to kiss a hand with leprosy, because most of us probably wouldn't even want to touch them, let alone kiss them. Exactly. And I said, she goes, oh, instant. I go, instant? Instant? She goes, well, I will be honest. I was a little afraid when I got stoned, because it kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stone as in literally with rocks. Stoned. Yeah, yeah. She said, I get kind of scared with that because it hurts. But, you know, mm-hmm. no. I said, you know, Heidi, I, I think God must have just touched you in the womb because that's not normal it's not <laughs> normal at 16 to be that bold yeah yeah mm-hmm. and she goes well i agree i think it i think it was a calling so Come yeah on. i said you think yeah right <laughs> yep yeah it definitely needs to be but you know there's nothing that she has that we can't all have come on mm-hmm. well nothing. now that you've said that this million soul harvest it's only going to happen through media yeah i've just a lot of that's going to happen through media or most of it yeah I would say there's a lot of people out there, even the ones listening to this podcast right now, that are going to be making things and doing things. Have you got any advice for young filmmakers? You just do it. It's like Nike. You just have to do it. Come on. The way you learn storytelling, production, I do believe in studying. I, I have been doing this 35 years. I'm still in screenwriting classes. I'm still, wow. I'm constantly stunning. I don't really. That's what Diane says about yes. acting because we had her, yes. she's our guest on you never, previously. Yeah, it's you a common theme. You never get to need to be. Wow. That's no, no. great advice. I spend a lot of money studying and the most, the most I can afford is the most, is the, where I go, you know? Yep. And I study, I study, I study, I listen to seminars, I listen to works, I read, I do all those kind of things. I don't really, on production anymore um i don't feel like i really need to take a lot of classes on how to hold a camera so to speak i mean you know i'm not doing that kind of thing anymore but it's the story the story the story the story the story so i still invest in a lot of that and i i think you should always be a student always 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 be a student but the way to learn storytelling is to start editing your own work because editing is where you learn storytelling and when you learn to edit that's when you learn how to be a director and everything it's it's editing and you learn what to work and and i believe Mm. in following your gut instincts my gut instincts that's holy spirit whatever but gut instinct instincts i think you know always lead you in the right direction and you know what god often will come through that gut instinct hey and you know at my ripe age i'm the same age as heidi i'm i still talk to myself about owning it you know owning your call owning what's inside of you and knowing who you are because when you do know who you are in christ that's when you really get set free to be who you are. Mm. Mm. Because yeah. there's an enemy of our souls that will try and yeah. take us out of that yeah. place of identity of who we are and yes. think it's a lie, think we're not that person, not we're not called to do that. So it's important to yeah. be on the front foot. And I'll tell you, I probably spent 25 or 30 years or however long. Uh, I know I spent a good 20 years praying and praying and praying for creativity, for more creativity, for more creativity. I know a lot of people pray for the gift of healing and all those, and I'd love to have all that. But the thing that I really, really want for what my call is, because my call is to tell God's story. Come on. Through media, that's my story. And that's my call. And so I, I pray, I pray, it's I your pray story for as well. creativity. That wasn't a slip. That, was, what? that what? is your story as well. Yeah. It's creativity. 
creativity. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, because I want to be able to see things differently, and I want to be able to tell stories from the way he sees them, and wow. and you know, it kind of it's like the things we're doing, like with the drone, and and there's there's about three or four different elements to the story I'm doing with Heidi that I haven't really seen done this way before, and because I want it to be fun to watch, and I want it to be a surprise and a joy and a Mm-hmm. Wow, I never seen that before. Yeah, something I'm telling fresh. You, that drone footage just with music is enough to put you under the floor. And then when you add God's voice, it's it's very very powerful. Come on, we are super excited about it's seeing so that. So awesome. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it is. Well, Sandra, we have five questions. Four questions now that we asked. No, no, we kind of just varies. Okay. <laughs> How do I stay looking so young? <laughs> Come on, What's yeah. the person. What's the other one? Perfect. <laughs> Your skin regimen. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. What products do you use? <laughs> no. Um. We we ask a few questions to every guest, and um, I suppose the first one I want to ask you is, what is your favorite movie? <laughs> well, you're going to think I'm a total dork. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm excited. I have a lot of favorite movies, but probably the movie I've watched the most is The Sound of Music. <gasps> dork, hey! that is amazing. Well, you know, it was considered corny and sugar-coated and all that when it came out, but Can I Can you care. sing What's your favorite that? song? I could, but uh, <laughs> we don't actually. Ask you would that. need healing. You would need healing if I did. So, so. <laughs> now the sound of music, incredible. Such I, a I, good I, one. I bought it. My, my five-year-old, who I, he's already at four, he loved it as a four. Just at four, it's wonderful. I've got the remastered version. But I love a lot of movies, but that's just the one I've seen the most. That's oh, solid. It's a classic. It's got everything in the music yeah. and the songs. And, and I love Julie Andrews. I think yeah. she's funny and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. And right. there's gr- crazy God moments in that film too. Really beautiful God. Oh moments. yeah, yeah, yeah. God okay. probably does like that movie because a few years ago, Brock and I were talking about it and yeah. how we watched it as kids and we loved it and we hadn't seen it in years. Yeah. And a guy showed up at our New Year's party and gave us that movie <gasps> that night. So wow. So God must like it. I don't know. It literally was that day and wow. we hadn't seen it in years wow. and we're like, oh, watch wow. it the next day. That's cool. I love it. Okay, what's the other question? Do you have a favorite sound? That's interesting. Mm. I don't know if I have a favorite sound, but I can tell you this. I was in a, your mother was in Dallas and she and Todd White were in Dallas. And the night Todd White spoke, the worship came on and this doesn't normally happen to me, but God came in so strong. I, my friends were trying to hold me up and I was waiting, they go, just sit down. I sat down and God like showed up and he started like taking me around the earth and as I would go around the earth, he was having me release these different things, but I could hear this sound. And it, it was a certain sound, and I would hear it in this language. And then we'd go to another country, and I'd hear it in this language. I could hear this sound in many different languages around the world. And what he said to me was, I'm going to send you around the world to capture that sound of worship. Because, see, like, oh. let's say if you're in Mozambique and they're worshiping, mm. it stays in Mozambique for the most part. And if you're in Absolutely, yeah. China... It stays in the underground church. And he says, captured it and then release it on the airwaves to release the sound of the earth. Because, you know, you know, like the first I Love Lucy show, the sound is still out in the atmosphere somewhere. It, the sound, once it's released through the airwaves, stays forever. Wow. So, that's a little. That's what he said, to release the sound. How interesting is that? I know. I don't even understand what all that means. I just know that's what <laughs> happened that day. So, you know, it changes the atmosphere. I don't know what it's about. I just know that's what he said. How, how cool is that for an answer? That's pretty cool, that? yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> that's awesome. that stumps most people, but you, that was amazing. Yeah. But, that, that, yeah, that whole thing of this, the air staying, it's whatever is released stays. It's, it is. Mm. Everything ever released through airwaves is up there forever. Wow. It's kind of bouncing around. Wow. I love that. That just made me feel like wanting to set up big speakers and just, like, release stuff. <laughs> I can yeah, see you doing that, actually, <laughs> for sure. Well, if I, if I see you doing that on the news, I don't know where you got the idea. <laughs> yeah, come on. Um, if you could pursue any other profession, what would it be? Cosmetics? No, no hardly. <laughs> Ice skater. Hardly. Um, 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 fighter bomber, pilot. Well, probably a few months ago, I would have given you a different answer that I'm going to give you now. I would want to do what your mother's doing. Whoa. Mm. <clears throat> I told Heidi, I said, you know, 
I don't understand this, Heidi, but ever since I got back from Mozambique, my heart keeps pulling me back, and I just, I want to go live in the dirt for a while. Mm -hmm. And she said, I think you need to make time to do that. Keep doing what you're doing, but you need to make time to do that. And I, I do. I just want to, I would like to try that. Mm. You know, mm. I've lived my life. No more surprise. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just like you to do something kids. different. And yeah. I, my kids are grown and yep. I yeah. just like to see what it feels like to really give myself away completely, totally. Wow. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's if I could hang around and do what your mother's doing for a while. I think it made me a better person. Mm. Wow. So that's kind of a funny answer, but that's what I'd do. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, the other question's a bit on this vein. When it's all wrapped up and, and your time is through on earth here and, mm. and you meet Jesus in heaven, what, what are the first words you'd love to hear from him about you? I love how you loved. This has been a big year <clears throat> for me, learning about love the last couple of years. And um, we can kind of get addictive, you know? You know, especially when I was younger, like, you know, 30s, 40s, whatever. I was pretty hot-headed, and, and if somebody said something I didn't like, I had to tell them how I felt about it. And, you know, the whole injustice and everything. Yeah. And that's just not so important to me anymore. It's, um, you know, I went through some family rejection and all that kind of stuff. And anyway, I've just learned a lot about love and the Father's love. And, you know, I had some times where Jesus would come to me. And one time I was a little girl on a playground and he walked me around and he said, this is what you need to understand. The family that you have on earth is the, they're a vehicle to bring you into the world and they raise you. And there's that special thing. But I am really your dad. I am really your mom. Wow. I'm really your brother and I'm really your sister. Oh. And what I think, what I say about you is what matters. And I mean, wow. You wow. know what I mean? You know, everybody has family hurts and all that kind of stuff, but it just really shifted my perspective that, and really, you know, I'm just a vehicle for my kids too. I'm the vehicle that God uses to bring them to the world and help grow them up, but they're not mine. Mm. You know? Mm. And I don't tell them that. I tell them they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. We'll edit this part out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Wow, so that's good. super sweet. Wow. Okay, there's four. One more. No, I think there's only no, four. No, we've got to end on four. that one. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> that's it. We're yeah. not going to get better that's than that. That's a great. You've, you've, yeah. you've answered those questions amazingly. Yes. Um, <laughs> But love, yeah, what a what a place to end. That's yeah, that's really the most. Well, important. Heidi Heidi always says, you know, her saying is love looks like something. We had a talk the other day in Israel, we were talking about love, and she says, Well, you know, love is an emotion, but it's also an action. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how when you don't feel the emotion, you have to do the action and then it creates the emotion. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's we get you get and you get caught up that you have to feel the emotion first, but that's not true. For it to be genuine. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I think it might even be easier to love a former witch doctor and his wife with leprosy. Sometimes that's probably easier to do than loving like family that can so hurt you because you know, family gives you a oh, lot of absolutely. opportunity to learn grace and love and forgiveness and <laughs> Yes. And you know what? But you know, I'm gonna end on this to tell you that there was a time number oh like 20 years ago i was just complaining to the lord about my husband and this and that and you know just really complaining because my life would be a lot better if he would just toe the line and straighten up and get this way and so i was talking to the lord and i heard the lord say something to me and i i think i must have really went it did like that and i started to cry you know what the lord said to me mm. so have you ever wondered what kind of deal he got <laughs> Yeah. I know, right? Mm -hmm. What do you say? I was speechless. I was in uh, Turkey when God spoke that to me. And I came home, and I waited after my trip, and I was I was going to tell my husband about the trip, and I thought, no, I'm going to wait till God tells me it's okay. So I sat down one night to tell him, 
about my trip. And I was going to say, we went here, we did this, we prayed over this, we did this, did this. And I opened my mouth. And when I opened my mouth to tell him about the trip, I just blurted out crying and started apologizing for not being the wife I should be and for just all the things God had showed me. And I, I had no expectations of saying anything like that whatsoever. Oh, my goodness. And um, I can say that was a... That was a benchmark day that I can tell you changed changed my life wow. when I opened up and and you know he just began to cry too and just said I just want you to be happy I just love you I mean he was very sweet but mm. you know wow. why God had to take me halfway around the world to change my life I don't know but he often seems to take you out of your environment to do that mm. yeah you know so even when we don't think he's paying attention or whatever he's always he's always got a plan he's always working wow always always even when i was a backslider he made sure i got a film degree <laughs> yeah he doesn't he doesn't yeah. waste any moment does he yeah no. like true. and the convergence of your whole life coming together and now that you're released to do something like yeah. this with heidi it's just yeah. it's a beautiful yeah. journey it is but i i will just say again if if people are watching this then they obviously are iris global supporters, fans, lovers of that. And I just want to encourage them. Or Sandra Martin Hicks fans because they've Googled your name and this has come up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, I'm really big. I'm really important. Like I told you, everybody that knows me knows me. So if if you are a person that appreciates Iris Global and the work that Heidi and Roland do and everything, I I just want to encourage them to come to heartstonepictures.com slash walk with me or just heartstone pictures you can check out some of the stories and and just start enjoying some of the footage um, that we shot because it's it's probably not some of it may be this what you've seen before but for the most part i think it's footage um that they haven't seen before yeah that's and, exciting and they're going to learn things about heidi and, and even roland that they haven't known before and i mean you know there's footage of heidi coming out to a bus giving everybody fried chicken and just <laughs> in the grocery store and at home and just you know yeah it's just who she is it's just life doing life it's just doing life come on yep it's yeah. beautiful yeah. It's good. We're excited to see the journey of it, too, unfolding. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Well, it's been great talking with you guys Yeah, today. thank you so much for fun. taking time out of your busy schedule to come and talk with us and, and well, share. And yes. for being obedient to God and, and coming to do the project with Heidi. So, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's an honor. Thanks for it's, your obedience. It's, um, it's the greatest honor of my life so far. Wow. Mm. It really is. Wow. I can't wait to see where we go from here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening today. Thanks for joining us. This has been incredible. We're super excited yes. about what God's doing with Sandra and Heidi and, and this whole walk with me. So, uh, And if you want to follow what's happening, let's just say one more time, the website is Heartstone. Pictures.com slash, slash walk with me. Walk with me. And yeah, we're excited to see the journey. And thank you, Sandra, for being with us. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the comment section on our Iris Global YouTube channel. And until next time. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.org.